So, we are looking at strength of uh, concrete as you can design with the supplementary cementitious material like fly ash concrete. I think we were looking at this in the last class and we said that uh, if the strength of OPC is somewhere here and we design the system for 28 days similar strength, similar 28 days strength, you will find that this would be true for ground granulated GGB FS also GGB, you know, fly ash or ground granulated blast furnace slag, etc., etc., even uh, uh, metakaolin or, or you know, in, uh, like uh, burnt clay pozzolanus. So, they would show strength, long term strength better. Uh, silica film, of course, behaves slightly differently because, uh, as I mentioned in the previous class, maybe sometime, that they are very fine. So, they go into the interstices of the cement itself. For example, if these are your cement clinker, these are your cement clinker and there once they you know the silica film will go somewhere there, silica film will go in between them because they are still finer than, finer than the cement particle. And this happens also at the aggregate, you know also happens at the aggregate uh, interface or boundaries. If this is my aggregate, this is my aggregate, so this is my aggregate. So, this is generally these are the weakest link near the aggregate packing of cement particles are not the best, very best you know like the aggregate particles let us say. Uh, they would be packing would not be very good and we call it interfacial transition zone where the packing near the aggregate packing is not very good. But when you put silica film let us say a fine material which is finer than cement which is finer than cement they will go into those space right they will go into this space and once hydration of cement takes place once hydration of cement takes place let us say this is this hydrates some of this will be used up and the hydration product will occupy more volume outer product which is outside the original grain boundary they will occupy more volume because so this will these are all the hydration product original ones are the black similarly here also this is the unhydrated portion this is the hydration product and this hydration product have got calcium hydroxide which can re react with this fine silica film. So, densify this particular zone itself because this material is very fine and since they are fine right in the beginning going into the interstices of the cement particle themselves they reduce down the porosity and pore sizes. So, silica film can show even somewhat early strength improvement while fly ash and ggbfs as we have seen ggbfs we have seen that it shows 20 early strength will not be there and uh, later on long term strength will be there so ggbfs and fly ash or any other kind of similar pozzolanas which are more of silica alumina system burnt clay system etc etc having uh, particle size larger they do not show this kind of uh, you know they show this kind of behavior that is early strength is relatively low. So, you need also their reaction process being slower you need more curing. So, curing time required is more for this material silica film also will require high curing that is not uh, that is there. Rice has cash as I told you they are cellular in structure you know they form cell sort of things they, will, they are cellular in structure structural cells something like this you know cellular in structures uh, I think I have shown in uh, um, I might have shown you a uh, um, electron micrograph which showed that they are actually cellular in structure. So, but these are this can they are very reactive because SIO content is very high. SiO2 content is very very high which is reactive 
and pozzolanic reaction can initiate as soon as calcium hydroxide starts liberating. That means your C2S or C3S starts reacting, reacting because C3S reacts earlier. So, these materials can show even can show somewhat not you know not diminished strength during the early age might similar strength almost because of their pore filling effect. Rice's cash also does same thing, but rice has, 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 has got other problem because they are cellular in structure although they have large surface area they consume a lot of water in the system. So, they have work you know issues related to moldability. So, generally one would prefer GGBFS and flyers etcetera for moderate strength concrete. It can be used for slightly higher strength concrete, but you have to design this and this is used for very high strength concrete or high strength concrete silica fume is for high strength concrete. So, you can have judicious, judicious combination of all this to make it uh, you know make it higher strength cost issue is also there. So, all that is make good sustainable material all that makes good sustainable material. Now, one issue of sustainability as we shall see later on when you come that it should be as much as possible maintenance free. So, in that context you know just I was showing you that this is my aggregate let us say this is my aggregate this is my aggregate this is the aggregate portion this is another aggregate cement clinker is here and this is the hydration product at any stage this is unhydrated cement this space between you know this aggregate and between space between this will be filled in by non sealing precipitate of calcium hydroxide if it is only ordinary portland cement clinker right this is the hydration product of the cement because cement hydrates origin some of the original grain volume that is occupied by hydration product size will reduced and it will go outside also and there will be some precipitation outside calcium hydroxide etcetera will precipitate outside right. So, this X calcium hydroxide particularly is a non sealing precipitate does not seal, but go there. So, this is the scenario of cement clinker if you look at uh, let us say this is for slag slag can react because as I said slag is got about 40 percent calcium oxide right and nearly 40 percent SiO2. Now, since it is rich in calcium and also been heated up together it can show cementitious reaction but not on its own only when it is activated by some alkalis. So, generally alkali activation is done cement if you add replace part for example, 50 percent slag and 50 percent OPC in fact, you can go up to 70 percent by IS code. Now, this one this one will activate the slag reaction also. So, slag hydration products of slag also would be there and if you look at it if you look at it hydration products of slag also would be there right. Hydration products of slag also would be there. So, hydration products of slag hydration products of OPC clinker additional because it has got 40 percent this has got 40 percent C C 40 percent near about 40 percent S. Now, if you see in this one 65 percent C 21 percent around 20 percent you know 21 22 percent S. So, roughly around one third. So, 40 and it is one third is about 13 12 13 percent. So, 12 13 percent of this will go into cementitious scenario, but still I am left with around 25 26 percent this will react to the calcium hydroxide produced from here. So, you have both cementitious and pozzolanic reaction in ground granulated blast furnace slag and this fills in the product you know that makes it more dense. So, hydration products of clinker with water hydration products of slag with water and impermeable precipitate of calcium silicate now calcium silicate hydrates they will generate. So, that is how they actually show and this reactions continues for longer period of time they are initially slow process, but later on also they continue and therefore, they densify the structure. If you calculate out the from stoichiometry 
dense specific gravities of calcium hydroxide and calcium silicate hydrate water etc plus water etc if you see the specific gravity of the initial product I mean density of the initial product or volume occupied by the initial product and final product will be similar they are not much different unlike cement cement is a solid portion volume of the solid increases cement and water volume of the solid increases density of the final product is less than that of original unhydrated cement but more than that of water so therefore hydrated cement particle occupies the space occupied by water and therefore solid portion increases so that's why the capillary porosities etc etc as you know the water field space which is from you know which is not occupied by hydration product when water evaporates that leads to capillary porosities so in case of ordinary portland cement but in case of clinker this will this was filled with non sealing calcium hydroxide precipitate non sealing calcium hydroxide precipitate but the same space now get filled with sort of similar volume changes are not there but now it is sealing material calcium silicate hydrate which is which has got a binding property or sort of you know so this is sealing so impermeable impermeable precipitate impermeable to water but not to vapor of course because gel pores are there very fine pores are there in cement hydrate system through which vapor can permeate but not water so this is how this is you know this how this is a reason why they show better strength development in the long run and possibly a densified structures with less water penetration potential so therefore from this point of view one could have something like composite cements as well composite cement is a combination of uh, cement by intergrinding portland cement clinker with granulated slag and fly yes or intimately and uniformly blended ordinary portland cement finely grounded grind, ground granulated slag and fly ash with required addition of gypsum so you can grind them or may not grind them so composite cement combines all therefore you are able to use a large quantity of waste material which were otherwise wouldn't have been used and reduced down the carbon dioxide because the more you know lesser you use the clinker is the better because clinker is the one which produces lot of carbon dioxide okay so this is what the current code gives fly ash around 15 to 35% slag from 20 to 50 and portland cement so this is extreme case would be you would not like to have this much so you can go up to 35 40 and use this kind of combination so that's what cement factories are those who are producing composite cements so you see now it was earlier i was talking of two now we are talking of three three components in the cement itself to cut down on mainly on the co2 issue of this particular work if you look at fly ash hydration reaction fly ash doesn't it's not cementitious because it is sio2 al2o3 al2o3 system fe2o3 etc etc no lime lime is very little lime less than c ao less than 10% in type f fly ash so this is done so cementitious reaction but the calcium hydroxide here would consume this and again form impermeable calcium silicate and calcium aluminate hydrate so calcium hydroxide which you can leach out if you add this material judiciously appropriately system design correctly this design system then you can reduce down that non sealing precipitate which can leach out and create more pores so therefore durability issues and strength issue both comes into picture so cement, you know such supplementary cementitious material can be used in cement to cut down onto the clinker and that's what is being attempted now if you see all cementitious material in this diagram triangular diagram this is the lime 100% lime is here you know 100% 90% etc 0% lime is this lime and 100% sio2 here this is 0% sio2 100% so if you take this slag for example slag will have lime whatever percentage is silica this much percentage is and alumina small percentage so if you see you know this is slag and let's see we are looking at various clays silica fume because it's rich in silicon oxide so it is somewhere there rest of the materials are very small you know so it's somewhere here so as you can see 
silica fume is somewhere there. Let me use another color, red color. Let me use so this is silica fume because low quantity of SiO, I mean low quantity of CaO and lower quantity of lower quantity of uh, uh, CaO is 100 here, lower quantity of Air2O3 as well. Rich in silica fume is 100 percent silica fume. So, you can see that Portland cement somewhere is here, right? Class C fly ash, class F fly ash, class slag, clay slag, natural pozzolans, they are there. So, judicious combination of all these are possible. So, cement today is not the cement or in future, for a OPC clinker will be replaced in a much, much bigger way to cut down on the carbon dioxide scenario because otherwise you need that much amount of land, earth surface, and granaries to capture that carbon dioxide you know, that is how we cal calculate the carbon land. So, if you see this is already the European code has actually identified this over the years and they have come out with more 27 combinations of cement system. So, if you look at this it is a kind of a snapshot sort of not much I mean although I have got to the same one in EN B, you know the British standard because we, we have been associating ourselves with British standard uh, because and we can understand that language as well. So, it is EN 197 all Europeans they have now combined single code and these are appendices anything additional from BS will be appendices anything additional from German DIN will be also. So, it will be called DIN EN 197 you know if it is a German one something specific to German, German you know the, from the German code if they have added that would be part of the appendix this is common. So, they have identified 27 combinations, same one is Portland cement, the only one. Now, if you see 95 to 500 percent is a clinker there, this is the clinker line, others are not there. This is one cement, sometime you might be using for some specific purposes. You come to then same two, which are Portland slag cement, Portland silica fume cement, Portland pozzolana cement, the various combinations are there you know same 2 a s etc. So, one can go into this and you can see percentage of slag or silica fume or pozzolans these are increasing as we go down. So, same 1 same 2 if you can see then myron radiation factors should be there there are other kind of you know uh, for example, crusher uh, there, there are other kind of uh, things uh, property enhancers are added sometime into the cement system. So, that they are allowing same 2 continued. Portland fly ash cement, Portland shale burnt shale cement, Portland limestone cement and Portland composite cement. So, composite cement will have 6 to 20 percent of all of them. You know the fly ash slag etcetera etcetera burnt you know, all slag and pozzolans right. So, these are then you have got same 3 blast furnace cement which will have uh, much less clinker content, but lot more slag content. This is pozzolanic cement, we will have more of this pozzolana here, then composite cement are the combination. So, you have such 5 cements main subsections, totally 27 combinations, combination they propose and which is to be used in what kind of situation some guidelines are also available. And all this does what? This reduces this component as much as possible, where you do not need you do not use that. So, that is the idea, that is the idea of cements that is the idea of varieties of cement, but this is not all about the cements this is not all about the cements. There are other kinds of cements which I will just discuss next. In the same ordinary Portland cement there are changes being done in order to have uh, you know the less less energy requirement less carbon production. Also there are cements like magnesia based cement. So, you do not have lime at all and uh, uh, you know uh, the whole reaction system is different. Therefore, you, you are not depending upon the clinkerization the way you do. Then there are other activated slag and activated fly ash or activated silica silica, silica alumina or pozzolana system. So, let us look at them some of them right now. High belite cement is one of them. High belite cement is high belite cement is one of them. What is belite? Belite is C2S. Belite is C2S. So, high belite system is one of them. Now, this is formed at 1200 degree centigrade. This is not new, this has been actually tried <coughs> upon earlier also to cut down onto the cost. Now, we know that C2S strength development is slower. First, 
C 3 s is the first one which gives the strength. If you look at the strength component, you know strength contributor or I rather like to say strength is not the right, it is strength potential because cement does not give the strength of concrete. Cement gives you strength, you know when I test the specification <coughs> of cement when I look at, I look at the strength potential in concrete. So, measurement we do by mortar test. So, this is not correct to say the strength of cement because we do not really make it is I mean this is what is used, but it is I am looking at actually strength potential of cement. So, strength potential in terms of that C 3 s is the one which starts reacting in the beginning and there is a reason also because we have produced it at higher temperature. If you, have, if you remember the phase diagram we talked about which I will talk again, C 3 s is produced at higher temperature it has got higher heat of hydration than this. C 3 has got the higher heat of hydration therefore, this is the one which will react immediately. C 3 s reacts next. So, this gives you higher strength uh, or rather you know reacts faster while this reacts late. So, if I use if you increase this one which I can do by changing the calcium oxide proportion there is something called lime saturation factor after that of course, there will be free lime. But, but you know the, the, the amount of C 3 s or C 2 s produced depend upon how much calcium oxide I have you know put into the system. So, temperature will be lower for production of this. So, this forms at 1200 degree centigrade while 1400 degree centigrade for C 3 s and other <coughs> ones. So, therefore, I need lesser energy lesser energy thermal energy to for clinkerization and uh, it generates less carbon you know calcium hydroxide also as we know calcium hydroxide generates less. In fact, it will you know this it is it is less since carbon calcium hydroxide is less generally calcium you know CH is less actually. So, you will have less chances of I mean it is less alkaline in the beginning itself, but if you can design the system carbon dioxide of course, it will not absorb much, but it has got slower strength gain. So, that is the thing that is thing. So, one can use this lower carbonation process may reduce the carbon emission by because carbon dioxide because clinkerization process also I reduce the calcium carbonate in the scenario right in the beginning calcium carbonate component would be content would be less in this one. So, it can reduce the carbon by 20 25 percent slower strength initially, but adequate strength development in the long run. So, it is almost like similar pozzolanic cement or so on. Typically 40 to 42 percent C 3 s as against about 55 percent C 3 s in ordinary Portland cement, 30 to 33 percent C 2 s as against around 20, 21, 22 percent in ordinary Portland cement in OPC and right instead of 55 and 20 percent respectively. So, you can see that this is increased this is reduced. So, this is this is increased and this is reduced right. So, slower strength of you know hydration process initially, but adequate strength that is what you get in the long run. So, this is what the phase diagram I might have showed you earlier, but I am just repeating. So, Lit is formed here this temperature that is your C 3 s, Bellite forms somewhere there. Therefore, your temperature you know it is almost its formation is almost there within this zone. So, therefore, you do not go to that high temperature. So, that is the thing carbon dioxide evolution naturally calcium carbonate content if you reduce down you know the carbon dioxide evolution will reduce down there, there you are not you know no, no carbon dioxide evolution will somewhat reduce down. So, lime saturation factor I think I might have you know you might have come across this terminology somewhere in concrete technology right. So, lime saturation factor is a basically a ratio of calcium oxide to rest of the material. So, some formula basically depending upon their density as well right and uh, density and reactivity etcetera etcetera. So, proportion of lime proportion of lime C <coughs> divided by this is silica proportion alumina and iron. So, if this is high supposing it is high then beyond 1 or 100 percent you will have free lime that is what we know, but we control this one can control this to generate high bellite cement right. So, some re reaction has been there similarly there are silica ratio alumina ratio etcetera. So, lime saturation factor greater than 100 results in free lime hence 
it is generally maintained in ordinary Portland cement clinker 95 to 98 percent and higher silica ratio means more C3, C3, etc., etc. So, you can combine this. So, compound combo, okay, one can approximately find out from one of the empirical formulae given. This is the kind of formulae. Well, accuracy is not very high of this one. Today, you can do X ray diffraction and other analytical technique to find out more accurately how much is the C3 S content, how much is the C2 S con content, etc., in a given cement. But earlier days, one would have used, or even now, people use roughly to find out how much is a C3S. So, the amount of C3S that is your elite will depend upon line 4.07 line, 7 minus no, more silica means this will be less. So, high rest all are minus, you can see. So, if this is high, lime is high, you will have more elite. And C2S, if you see more, you know, more silica of course. So, if you reduce down the line, increase the silica, this will increase and C3S will reduce and more the C3S less will be C2S. So, less C3S means more C2S. So, this is the this, this is how people have tried to control and this has got a renewed interest now because it can reduce your carbon emission by 20 25 percent energy deduction everything put together. C3F is given by this formula. C4AF is given by this formula. So, this is this is what it is. So, this as I said 55 it goes to about 40, <coughs> 30 to 40. This was uh, if this is this one calculates out it will go to around 30 or so. So, that is the thing. So, lime saturation factor used is 78 to 83 percent in this kind of cement, not 95 to 98, which would have been ordinary Portland cement clinker. And F E C R B etcetera, you know, like iron, chromium, boron, barium oxides are important. Important because you have to melting point. You know, melting point, you would have heard of what is called elevation of boiling point, depression of freezing point. So, in a in a solution, if you put a solute, its boiling point changes, right. So, when you put some other material melting point when you know melting temperature at which it will melt to control that to lower it down they have also add this ones in controlled condition of course, it is a part of the research. So, people have actually done this then rapid cooling and quenching for bel belite stabilization. So, they quench it you know after rapidly cooled and uh, quenched with you know cooling cooling essentially cooling. So, high balance cement for good for freeze thaw resistance, lower shrinkage, lower permeability resistance against chemical attack VCV OPC almost similar to performance of pozzolanic cement and similar ones actually they you know more densified structures and all that. Then the next cement that I will talk about is re re reactive magnesia. So, by the way this you know this is this some some research were, do were done quite in 1980s, 90s in fact in uh, uh, in fact, when I look at the literature in uh, journals, I, I find the most referred paper comes from uh, SEC. Dr. A.K. Chatterjee's paper is referred very well all over the place done in 1990s. They tried this, but then now the Chinese have popularized it. They have started producing things of this kind of cement because of this carbon issue. Carbon issue was not an issue earlier in 1980s, 90s. They possibly wanted to have another cement and you know cost reduction and things like that. Reactive magnesia cement been uh, quite a bit of it is being attempted in Australia and New Zealand. So, essentially what it relies on magnesium hydroxide reacting from with carbon dioxide of atmosphere forming this and this further reacting with you know these are the kind of reaction this the other reaction could be something like this. This is one reaction this could be other reaction. So, essentially the cement will have magnesium hydroxide right in it which will absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and therefore, they will it will solidify right it will solidify. Okay. So, that is a uh, that is the thing, but this has got higher water demand the co to make it more make it more um, flowable the water demand has been high that is what I am seen and people have tried to attempt these are all attempted not yet come into the market this will take possibly take some time. Portland cement magnesium oxide blend 
they have of course two of them portland cement cement hydrates independently and this one magnesium oxide will work separately right so people have tried with this made ground in gober 